Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Say Tell 2020. I'm your host, Multar. No Billy today. He's got some family stuff going on. But we are here coming back again with Gold League. Um, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I made some audio changes. I'm actually taking audio directly out of voice meter and pumping into OBS. So hopefully you guys are able to hear me. Hopefully everything works. Uh, but today we are back with Gold League. Number 15, Battle Axe is taken on Harpia in a Gold League 4v4 matchup. We do have a return of the Tomcat for number 15. I believe, I'm not sure what Harpia is flying, but it is going to be the B weapon restriction. Maycop taken on Sanaki, so a little bit of a medium to long air engagement. Um, but today should be a good one. We got some stuff to talk about, but before we get into this, let's do our sponsor roll. And then get into the action. See you guys back here in just a minute. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Man, those super cuts are so nice. So nice! Dang. A little quiet. Uh, maybe, you know, you just got to turn the volume up. I didn't want to, I don't want to break people's eardrums, you know, when stuff comes on. I'll, I'll look at that. When I'm doing stuff at full volume and monitoring it, it's plenty loud for me. So maybe just turn up your volumes a little, a little bit. What happened to my face? Uh... The stuff on my face got a little bit irritating. You know, having a Brillo pad on my face, it just, I didn't really like it. So I got rid of it. It's nice to to get rid of it every once in a while. Yeah, it's actually not Multar. I'm his brother. It's, uh, the bread on my face is gone. But I, did, I just, 
I got over it. I didn't like it. So it'll grow back, you know. My beard grows fairly quickly, but I just, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But anyway, in other news, today's stream is going to be brought to you by Black Hog. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what Black Hog is, Black Hog does button boxes. Um, they've actually got some pretty cool stuff coming. I don't know that I'm able to share this, but I'm going to anyway because it looks pretty cool. They didn't get back to me in time, but I feel like we need to share this. So I'm going to we're going to watch a short video. It's really short. Um, a little bit of a teaser to see what's coming. But check this out. It's a little bit of a teaser. Um, looks like a button box. So Black Hog does button boxes, but from what I understand, they're getting more into more button boxes. We've So people have talked about Verpil doing their stuff, but in my eyes, there's not enough people doing button boxes, especially for the virtual combat space or the virtual sim space. So it looks really good. I've seen some other pictures. I won't go into it, but it, this stuff looks mother trucking awesome. So huge shout outs to Black Hog for doing that. There's going to be some really cool stuff coming uh, for anybody again that doesn't know who Black Hog is. They do um, a button box that I'm still waiting on. It got lost somewhere over the Atlantic. It's been a couple months, so they've been gracious and they said they're sending me another one. Um, but I'm really anxious to get that. A lot of people have said that it's really, really good and to see them coming out and doing more is even cooler and there are going to be some other ones from what i understand there's going to be like a communications one with a nine pad or a 10 pad 10 key there's going to be like a landing gear one there's going to be a bunch of different button boxes that they're going to offer so i'm really really excited about that and they, they're also supposed to be from what i understand possibly made of metal which is also very cool hellwalker asks any news in twitch partnership yet no i'm being ignored i i'm putting it all on the corona in that, you know, everybody at Twitch caught coronavirus and everybody died and we're just wa running on a phantom shell of what it is. So maybe everybody's dead and they just haven't gotten back to me because of that. That's that's what we're going to we're going to go. Jaster says he has a black hog and it's great. I cannot wait for mine. I am ready. I want it. It is not here yet. I want it. But I'm really excited for their new ones. But no, no news, Hellwalker, on the Twitch partnership. We're still waiting. I check multiple times a day, and I haven't gotten anything. It's been like four weeks. Their thing says seven working days. Twitch, it's been over seven working days. I know you're all not dead. I know Corona has caused things to slow down, but, you know, we move on. We, we keep going. We keep going. How about the RAM? I am running 32, not 32, 64 gigs of RAM. It has happened. I haven't overclocked it yet. But the PC is running much better, so I actually think there was some issues going on with my other RAM. Um, on top of it being fully loaded when multiple clients of DCS were running at the same time, and I was streaming. Uh, but I did put it in. It is running great. I have had no issues. My stability has actually increased. I was able to lower the voltage on my CPU overclock, so I went from 1.38 volts at 5.3 gigahertz to 1.35. And I haven't checked if I can actually drop it further, so there's definitely a possibility that we're going to be able to go even further down. Maybe I can go to 5.4. I don't know. But so something else I was thinking about before we jump into the action um, is I really want the 3090. So the 3090, the NVIDIA 3090, it's supposed to have like 24 gigs of VRAM. I know that sounds like a lot, but, you know, it's going to allow me to run even more cameras. But I was thinking about this that I don't know in my Intel platform if I have enough PCI Express lanes. Because I have a total of 40. And the 16 from the CPU, from what I understand, go directly to the GPU um, on the South Bridge. I think it's the South Bridge. And then you have 24 from the chipset. But four of those go to the bridge. And then 20 go to the other PCI Express lanes. 
and they're shared through uh, data, like your hard drives and stuff, through the other PCI Express ports, through the PCI ports. Um, I don't know that I'm have enough because I checked recently, and my GP right now is running at eight times, which for the 2080 Ti isn't a big deal. I'm probably missing like one percent of my overall um, performance. But I don't know that I'm going to have enough. Hellwalker, get a new Risen PC for streaming. That's just more money. And I actually just moved away from dual PC setup. I like my my single PC. I like the 10900 for gaming. But I don't know that I have enough PCI Express lanes. I never thought I'd be in this situation. But I have to run a daughter card to run eight monitors because I'm running eight monitors. So I need the, the the extra video outs. I've got a USB card for all the USB devices I run because my motherboard just can't handle it even though I have a bunch of hubs. And then I have a SATA card because um, I got a bunch of platter drives and some other stuff. So, um, yeah, I got a bunch of stuff. Sword Van, I think it's... There's a picture of it, I think, on the stream page. I think there's a picture of my setup on the page somewhere. Maybe. Is it here? Uh, specs. Yeah, if you go to the specs page, the specs panel down below, you'll see a picture of my setup. And the PC down below has changed, and I've changed some stuff. I've added a new DAC and a headphone amp and stuff. But um, yeah, I get, when I go big, I go big. No, no reason to go under to underdo anything. You must overdo absolutely everything. That is the way. That is the way. Mandalorian baby that is the way but anyway guys let's jump into the sim again this is going to be number 15 taken on Harpia we're returning to Gold League today in other news we'll be back with Gold League Thursday there will not be a stream on Saturday I've got some stuff I need to take care of um, for the house we're building I have to move some giant rocks for our landscaping so I gotta go with my uncle's a contractor we gotta drive the dump truck and the uh the loader and move some like two to three thousand pound rocks so that's what i get to do on my saturday morning instead of being here with all of you so just a heads up that there will not be a stream on saturday uh how can i manage to have a stream like a setup like this and keep my marriage because my wife is awesome i love my wife she is fantastic if you are listening to this babe love you sometimes she tunes in just you know lurks Sometimes she's here. She actually took the alias on Discord and stuff because I talked to her through Discord when I'm downstairs. She works from home and she's upstairs. Um, she took the alias of Mrs. Moltar. So that's her alias. That's what she decided decided to do. Let her host a stream. Dude, she has no interest in any of this. But she likes it when I'm home. She supports me in my hobbies. Um, you know, she likes that I do this. And yeah, I'm glad to have her. Awesome wife. Couldn't ask for anything more. From her she's she's fantastic but let's jump into this let's get into the sim again number 15 taken on harpia don't know how this one's gonna go but i've heard it's gonna be a good one so let's see how these guys get on all right all right so here we are in the sim cruising we got beaver in the tomcat not sure who his rio is and then we got skinner in the f-18 and the two j11s cougar and vertical charlie change the music here beaver where are you going Beaver. Beaver! Where are you going? He, like, was turned down here, and then he decided to go the other way. Where are you going? I guess he's going around? Where are you going? Foxtrot Alpha, who's the new dude? Moltar's brother. Filling in for him. He got the Rona. He's sitting in the back room dying. Oh, so while we're watching these guys taxi, is the jet noise too loud? It's hard. I monitor all this stuff through my headphones, but sometimes it's it can be a little difficult to tell if it's too loud for you guys. I think everything's mixed pretty well. Um, but in other news, I am going... So I talked about this a little bit in the past, but I am going to launch a server. It's happening. Like, I know I have these servers, but... We're going to, or I'm going to launch a multiplayer server. So the idea behind it is just to provide a 
very simple mission where veterans in the DCS space can go beat the shit out of each other and have very... I mean, I'm on all the time. I'm available all the time with Satal and all that stuff. So the idea is just to be approachable and available and to be, you know, try and give the community the community really what they want. Uh, the maps are going to rotate. It's going to be on Syria, I think, for a while. But I think eventually we're going to rotate between Syria, Persian Gulf, and the Caucasus. Um, so that's coming. It's going to happen. I, I bought servers or renting servers from Hetzner. I got two more thirty Ryzen thirty six hundreds, so they're gonna they're gonna come. Uh, so like blue flag, but more simple. No, like simple, simple. I don't know. Simple, simple, like not not complex at all. Like very little scripts, if any. Um, just very very simple. Not a lot. Not a lot going on. Because I think screw the, the uh, scripts and more stuff you got on, tons of ground units, it just ruins the overall experience. And I want something that's easy. We're going to do low population, like 30 to 40, um, maybe with some dedicated squadron slots so that if the server's full, people can still get in. Uh, but it's coming. It's coming in the next couple weeks, hopefully. I've got the servers. I have to build them up today and install the operating system, get DCS installed and um, all that stuff. The other thing that it's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to provide a secondary location for Satal. So if some teams have issues with the Hetzner data center, the other one's going to be located in Finland, um, which shouldn't be that bad. The ping was like 20 different, so it wasn't like mind-bogglingly different. But if people have issues with Hetzner in Germany, they're going to have a should have a better time of connecting to the ones in Finland because I know there are some people that have some issues connecting to servers um, in Germany right now. I don't know why, but they do. So that's coming. And I need to change. We're going to move. There we go. So I think we got a little bit until these guys take off. But how's everybody doing on this fine Tuesday? I'm doing decently well. Nothing new. Just build my house. Watched the finale of Yellowstone last night. That was good. I was really good. I was excited about that. Left it on a cliffhanger. I was not excited about that. But, you know, you, can, you can't can't control everything. Um, but how's everybody doing? When do, you move to, when do I move to my new house? Uh, Hopefully November-ish. I don't know if... We're, I'm probably going to have to take a break from streaming for like a week while I get everything moved and set up. Um... I hope uh, hopefully it's not any longer than that, but we'll have to see. We will have to see how that goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm anxious to see if the the 64 gigs of RAM helps helps the stream and have everything nice and smooth. But we're gonna have to see if it actually helps. Nice Christmas present, yeah. It's a very expensive Christmas present if we want to look at it that way. But, you know, it is what it is. Zeto came in and dropped 5,000 bits. Thank you very much, brother. Much appreciated. That was very, very kind of you. Very kind of you. Thank you very much. So, everybody, give shout outs to Zeto in chat. Um,. That's going to go straight to the 30 and 90 fund and anything else that we need for making this stream better. I can't really think of anything else that's that we need. Chat, do you know of anything that'll make this stream better? What could we get? What hardware could we use? Hmm. I mean, one thing is obviously getting partnership, which I hope we get. I can't see why why we wouldn't get partnership. I mean, we're sitting at about 200 subs. You know, we hold, we're the largest stream for DCS um, by a significant margin. Gazra, I have three stream decks. <laughs> I do use them. More mustache? Uh, I'm not a fan of mustaches. I don't think my wife would be a fan of those either. Why does the runway not look great? Probably because this is Caucasus. And Caucasus is old. That would be my guess. 
Yeah, I got three stream decks. I got a another, you know, another XL stream deck actually wouldn't be bad. I've got an XL, I've got a normal one, and I've got a small one. The small one I use for DCS for when I fly. But the XL is for all of the um the scenes and stuff for OBS and uh transitions and all that stuff, and then the the normal ones for music. That's what that one's that one's used for. Women would make stream better. Uh, I get the idea, G.I. Joe, that women in DCS don't necessarily jive very well. Um, there are some women in DCS. I love them for it. But most women, I don't think, have any interest in it. Is the stream deck worth it? Dude, they're awesome. Completely customizable. Completely customizable, uh, button boxes. With little LCDs that change. They're phenomenal. They're great. Quick shout outs to Dagwood for dropping 100 bits and for Steve099 for dropping 100 bits. Much appreciated, guys. And thank you to all the followers that came in while we were offline and while we've come online today. It's been, it's always great to see new faces. Just waiting on these guys to take off. They should be departing here any second. That's what I've got. Um, when I looked at the TAC view, I can see them doing their aileron checks. We should see a departure. Uh, something that we saw a little bit last week. or we, we didn't see anything because these are from old patches. But has anybody noticed a big change in the R77 and the ER? So, right in chat. For the time being, we're going to crank up the volumes. Watch these guys depart. And we will we come back and I'll answer and try and catch up on chat when all that gets back. But guys, chat sounds the morning. Here we go. Well, that's not good. Hmm. Why are there no jet sounds? Hold on. I got to try and figure this out. Stereo. Output. I think I fixed it. Hold on.
Man, I don't know that I can... These headphones... I can't do it. I can't do it. Hold on. Ugh. I just can't. I can't. They sound like butt. I can't do it. Those are awful. Awful. I mean, they're great headphones, but, you know, I'm wearing these every day. My Sennheiser HD 800S's. I just can't. Uh... I can't. They're butt phones. Yes. Butt phones. The sound stage on these is just so much better. I can't. I can't use the. Those were sure. Uh, two something. They're great headphones. They're just I, I I wasn't. They weren't doing it for me. These are a lot better, and I don't feel like I have somebody sticking things in my ears. Yeah, JG one. The beard is gone. It'll grow back. It'll grow back. Mel one two three four five. I love Mel. I love your name. Raids with a per party of thirty. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For anybody just joining us, this is Saytel 2020. I'm your host, Moltar, and Saytel and Squadron Air-to-Air -air League pitting squadrons against one another in an air-to-air deathmatch in mission locations that are all over the Caucasus. This one is Makop taking on Sanaki. The only relevance in that is that's where they're departing from. They fly to the AO, which if we take a look at the mission location, you guys, I'm going to leave my webcam up. Little AO, there's a bubble that exists that extends probably 50 nautical miles in any direction it di with a uh, diameter of 100 nautical miles. Once you enter the bubble, you can't leave. If you leave, you can't re-enter. If you re-enter after leaving, you die. You go boop, and you blow up. So DCS, ED, if you're listening, boop, you guys need to incorporate that sound effect when somebody dies. You know, somebody dies instead of going boop, and they blow it up, goes boop, and they just get Booped, instead of having these explosions. But anyway, Squadron Area League is a team death match that pits squadrons against one another. Today's matchup is number 15, taken on Harpia in a 4v4 beat em up. Gold League, which is what we're watching today, is 4v4. Uh, weapon restrictions, which is B today, is 120Bs, 120C is banned, and the AIM 54. C and AIM-54 Mark 60 are banned. I still want fact tag for you to make that sound when somebody dies. I can talk to Franz. You know, maybe that's a... We can make that an option, a turnable option. It would be kind of cool to get some kind of sound effect when somebody dies. Wouldn't it? Regardless of what that sound effect is, that would be kind of cool. When is the next Diamond League matchup? Uh, that is a good question. Let me change the camera view here real quick and I will check when is the next Diamond League matchup Robski I am checking for you hmm next Diamond League is going to be Golden Crown versus Taw and it's going to be a little bit because that doesn't pl take place till the 15th. It's going to be a little bit. I Rob Ski. Probably a couple weeks is when we'll go back to, to Diamond League. There's just so many more Gold League matchups than there are Diamond League. Um, it'll be a while. So we're going in chronological order. Uh, right now, we are at the 2nd of August. Um, the next Diamond League match is on the 15th of August. But we still have to go through the 2nd of August, which is there's three matches, including today, then the 7th, then the 8th. So there's six matches to get through. So this week, then next week, and then we'll be back to Diamond League is how that's that's going to roll. Anyway, hopefully that answers your question. Separation between these two teams is down to 47, oh, 47 nautical miles, so... We could see Phoenix is coming off, and indeed we do. There goes the first Phoenix. It is launched by Maza Mazucato. Mazucato. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Hopefully I didn't screw that up too much. But it's a Mark 47 launched by, I'm going to call you Maz, 
launched by Maz, and the F-14 from Harpia, flown by Maz, was at 35, 40, 35,000 feet. So that's a decent shot. Not too bad, 40, 40 miles. But it was launched on Beaver, who was already defending. So I don't know if he saw that launch from zooming in or what. Maybe it was an STT launch, but that is that is already coming. Or that was, he's already defending, excuse me. So good on him. Hopefully that meant that he had his eyes out and was looking for that. Uh, in other news, we've got Bob and Trigger heavily separated from the, the main element of Bran and Maz. And I guess I should take the time to tell you who's flying. We've got Bran and Maz. Bran in a Mirage. Maz is in a Tomcat or a Kit Kat, as we're going to call him. And then Trigger in Bob. Trigger is in a Su-27 and Bob is in an F-16. And then on the number 15 side, we have Skinner in an 18 Cougar in a J-11 Beaver in a Kit Kat and Vertical Charlie in a J-11. Separation between the two teams is now down to 27 nautical miles uh, at the main point on average. And then at the close point, we're down to 20 miles. So Trigger and Bob are ingressing on a singleton of Vertical Charlie, and they are still closing. Still closing. Let's see. So here's Trigger. We're going to go to a split-screen view so you guys can see what's going on. Here's Trigger in the lead Su-27. Hasn't launched anything yet. He is at 20,000 feet. Looks like he is breaking away as they see that Vertical Charlie is now ingressing. I Maybe he STT locked one of them, and Trigger was like, I don't want anything to do with that. And he turned around, and Bob looks like he is doing the same thing. So neither one of those guys decided that they wanted anything to do with Vertical Charlie and his J-11. Beaver, where are you going? That Mark 47 just took you completely out of the fight. Dude is 30 miles away from his nearest friendly. Beaver just, I guess he tunnel visioned on a tree. It was like my tree. And it just drug him all the way towards Sochi. He's totally out of the fight. We'll see if that causes any problems for him. I Robski says, dying against Mirage, though. Pretty big face palm, in my opinion, if he got 120s. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Savior kills a lot of people, Robski. But I haven't seen Savior in Mirage. He's been in the 18 a lot. Maz puts another Mark 47 out on Cougar. Let's grab that bad boy and see if that's going to have an effect on Cougar as it comes in. So here's that Mark 47 coming in onto Cougar. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. So there it is. And let's grab Cougar's perspective. That Mark 47 is just coming off power. Split screen. So Mark 47's coming in. Cougar, there it is. Three miles away. He's not doing anything. He's not doing no Cougar. Oh, no. And just gets smashed. What happened? Oh, no. All the humanity. Telephone pole rammed up the butt. Oh, no. Oh, man. That was bad. That was, that was rough. Oh. Oh. Just took it. Bent over and took it like a man. Oh, Vertical Charlie now ingressing onto Bob. Bob sees him and is now pressing hard. F-16 against J-11. Bob is at 15,000 feet. Vertical Charlie rocking the J-11 at 16,000 feet. And that 120 comes off from eight miles. Vertical Charlie is now defending hard. Let's go to his point of view. That's an eight mile 120. I don't see it. Where'd it go? There it is. Three miles away. Two and a half miles away, he's going to be able to get away from that one just fine because it is a 120B, so no worries there from Vertical Charlie. He is okay. Oh, we got a disconnect. Skinner DC'd. So we thought things were bad when uh, Cougar got hit, but no. They got even worse because Skinner just DC'd. That is bad news. And actually, the... Um, I want to say, no, no, never mind, never mind. So Skinner DC seats were down to two combatants left for number 15, and Beaver is still out of the fight. Beaver, I don't know what Beaver's got, where he's going. Where are you going? 
Oh, and Diagnosis says that aim, that uh, AIM-54 was a team kill. It was indeed. Um, it was a, uh, we'll look at it in the TAC view. It was an AIM-54 that was launched from back here. And I was wondering why it was still under power, um, but it, it was a team kill. So that's, that's just bad. That's just bad news. So things went from bad to worse to even worse because that was a team kill. So just bad. Beaver was so far out of the fight, then came back in and decided, guys, I'm already out of the fight. I'm going to take one of you guys out of the fight with me and just did what he did. Aim 54 now launched him and assume that's on brand as vertical Charlie, if we see him right now, is climbing. The Aim 54 is going to go above him. I don't see it, but it is somewhere above him going in on brand. Nope. Can we see it? Nope. That's the F-14. So the Mark 47 is headed towards brand. Maz is already turning away. They're both, well, I don't know what brand's doing. Brand is now defending. So brand is defending the Phoenix, which is three miles away. He's over Mach 1. Shouldn't be a problem. Now two and a half miles away. That thing's going to lose all of its energy as it comes through on terminal guidance and actually gets line of sighted. So well defended by Brandon the Mirage. And the Mirage, we haven't seen that many missiles launched. Very, very few missiles launched. We had a disconnect. We had a team kill. Um, so not a lot's happened. AIM-7 now launched by Beaver. And then is immediately unsupported. Let's check and see what the F-14 has left. I don't know what that aim, the point of that AIM-7 was. So the F-14 has an AIM-7, two 54s, and two AIM-9s remaining. So he's still got some long boomy sticks. Vertical Charlie is now ingressing by himself as Beaver turns away. Going back to the water, as Beavers do. But Vertical Charlie is headed straight in to a... Uh, a concave and brand is in a really good position to ingress onto vertical Charlie's flank if vertical Charlie doesn't see him so let's grab brands position here brands in the Mirage we don't see vertical Charlie and vertical Charlie has turned into him so we're gonna grab vertical Charlie's perspective we're gonna go to split screen there goes an ER from vertical Charlie from 10 nautical miles and reminder, guys, that this is pre-last patch. So this happened um, August 1st, August 2nd. So the ERs are still going to be neutered. More neutered than they are now in the current patch. So just be aware that even though we got a patch that they got a little better, doesn't mean that they're better in this one. So, But that ER was... Uh, a non-factor R-77 now launched from Vertical Charlie. Let's go back to Vertical Charlie. So he's ingressing. I'm going to put split screen up. Oh. oh, he's got an AIM-54 on him now. That came from Maz. And Vertical Charlie, it's not on Maz. It's on Beaver. So Vertical Charlie continues to get deeper. And you can see the AIM-54 pass him. Goes off of power. It may have actually gotten notched. Off of power. And we're watching him ingress. And actually, let's put up the split screen here so you guys can see what's going on. So, Vertical Charlie is ingressing against a four ship. All right. There is still four remaining for Harpia, two remaining for number 15. But Beaver, the F-14, is so far out of the fight, he might as well not matter right now. Uh, Vertical Charlie is seemingly pressing on his own. Now head-to-head -head against Bob. There goes an ET. I don't see Bob defending. Bob is not defending. And is that missile going to be able to catch him? There's the ET, 0.8 miles away, and it's not going to be able to, to reach him, which is unfortunate. Beaver actually put an AIM-54 out, but look how far away Beaver is. Look how far away he is out of the fight. Man. Now let's jump to Trigger's point of view. So we got number 15's vertical Charlie on the left and Harpia's Trigger on the right. Trigger is... Coming in against Vertical Charlie. I thought that was Vertical Charlie up there, but it is not. I don't know where he went. Vertical Charlie is a little bit away. So we're back to the, the map view. It looks like Vertical Charlie is trying to regroup with Beaver instead of being on his own. So Beaver has realized he is too far out of the fray to be 
a factor in this fight and is recommitted. And Vertical Charlie looks to be regrouping with him. So again, Vertical Charlie is on the left of the split screen and the map is on the right. Now we have Ma Maz in the F-14 ingressing on the right. Let's grab his point of view and see what he's got. He's got one Phoenix left, so he could be a factor. There goes the Phoenix, and that is coming in on onto Vertical Charlie, it looks like, I think. No, it's actually on Beaver. So he comes away. Can we get that thing? That's not it. That's not it either. Here it is. So it's still under power. It's coming in onto Beaver. And we're going to grab Beaver's perspective right here. And boom goes the boomstick. And Beaver gets taken down. Doesn't make it to water. And is now a flaming wreck. Headed towards the ground. That is really unfortunate. Now Vertical Charlie is all on his own. First missile coming from the Mirage. It's a Matra. That thing's going to get line of sighted. Vertical Charlie decides, I can't ingress against a three ship. He breaks away. And now he is running for his life with from four combatants from Harpia. So we're going to try and get back there. Let's go to split screen so you guys can see what's going on. Vertical Charlie's running from Brand and Trigger. Brand's at 650 knots ground speed. And Trigger is the same. Vertical Charlie's at 600, so they're about even. 7,000 feet for Vertical Charlie. And I want to see these two climbing. I definitely want to see these two guys climbing. I think they're going to be able to run him down, though. I, he's doing, like, these defensive maneuvers when he doesn't need to, and he's bleeding a lot of his airspeed. E.T. coming from Trigger now. We can see it coming in onto the backside of of Vertical Charlie. Here comes his second ET, 0.5 miles. That gets flared, goes into the mountain. And I think I just saw another missile launch. There goes an ER. Lots of things being launched from the Harpia side and Vertical Charlie's flying straight into it and just gets bamboozled in the face. Unseen facial and he takes it. And that is gonna be it. Harpia capitalizes on that that attempted recommit from Vertical Charlie trying to make something happen there. And it looked like Vertical Charlie was able to take somebody down with him. I think it was Brand. But with that many people in the same location, you're not going to be able to take them all down. So Brand, I think, was the one that actually took out Vertical Charlie as well. So we'll call that a trade. And we still got four pilots against one. A trade is A-OK. -okay. Trigger now releasing all of his remaining munitions, I guess in a case of trying to save weight. The vertical Charlie, I guess, thought, I, I got to try and make something happen. Tried to recommit, and bad things happened. Very bad things happened. You get a face full of missiles. usually leads to death and critical to winning is staying alive if you're dead you can't win gotta stay alive so you guys are talking about the 18 and the 15 18's decent 15 still king even without without data link he got gang banged vertical charlie yeah or you got gang banged that was you yeah you definitely uh lubed up and bent over for him and they stuck it to you but while they're egressing and headed home, let's take a look at the tack view and see what actually happened here. All right. So here we are looking at the tack view. And you guys do not want to just be looking at the map. There we go. Oh, they disconnected. So it looks like we're just going to look at the tack view. Okay. All righty. Well, that works. So we're going to look at the tack view now. That round is over. So let's close this. Let's see what happened. Things just went horribly, 
horribly for number 15 in that round. Just bad to worst, even to disaster state, to declaration of emergency. That was just, that was rough. That was very, very rough. But let's see how this, this happened. So here's the aim 54. Cougar is defending this aim 54, which he does fairly well. Um, and then just gets, I guess he's trying to run away from it, recognizes that it's out of energy, and then flies headlong into Beaver's aim 54 that he released on his on his teammate, which is, that is rough. That is unfortunate, but you know it happens. And he gets smashed by a, by a friendly aim 54. It's bad enough to get hit by enemy telephone poles, but friendly telephone poles, this is this. It's just sad. F's in chat for Cougar. Taking it from the teammates. But moving on. So Skinner was the next guy that that got taken down, and he just DCs right there in the in the recommit. Just. Vanishes, gets hit hit by the internet. Internet takes another one. And then Vertical Charlie and Beaver do a decent job of not dying. They stay alive, staying alive, staying alive. They do a decent job of prolonging the fight. But Beaver just gets caught with his pants down, forgot to wear the belt. And this AIM-54 launched from a decently close range from 10 miles. Uh, you're not going to run away from that Beaver. You have to notch that. And you have to anticipate that if you're coming up against... It, F-14s, you can't get caught with your pants down at high altitude. You got to remember the belt, get low early, and he doesn't. Forgets the belt, gets caught high, his pants fall down, and he can't do anything about it. And he takes the telephone pole up the pooper, which is something you don't really want to do. I mean, sometimes you have to, to get it cleared out, but it's not something people really want to be doing. Anyway, moving on. Vertical Charlie is now all alone, all by his lonesome, against a four ship from Harpia. Brand and Trigger lead the way. At this point, he decides after they start launching missiles at him that Vertical Charlie, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, you decide that I'm probably not going to outrun these guys. I got to try and make something happen and recommits here. I would have liked to see him instead of just recommitting out in the open to try and line aside everything. You know, maybe juke right and then come back left to try and um, fix or lose somebody. Maybe pull an epic ninja cheese and come back in. But look at all the missiles in the air. Man. That is just bad news and just gets dominated. He gets the R-77 off, so he takes somebody down with him. He's like the, the, the Balrog in the Mines of Moria. In, is that happening in the Two Towers? I think it happens in the Two Towers. And... Gets taken out by Gandalf, but the Belrog's like, I'm not going down by myself, and takes Gandalf down with him. Does it happen in the Fellowship? I thought that was the Two Towers. Sport was the Two Towers. Fuck, I thought it was, it's Folly, you fools. I thought it was Folly, you fools. Is it Fly? All right, it's Fellowship, I'm wrong. God, I consider myself Lord of the Ring or Lord of the Rings nerd. And here, I'm, I'm listening to the Similarian on Books on Tape, which has been great getting the back the backstory to a lot of stuff but he takes somebody down with him he's the belrog gets taken down by gandalf there's a gandalf in Satel. um but he gets taken down by brand who is now gandalf um takes the trade but that's all it took harpia ends up with still three pilots remaining and number 15 doesn't make them rtb and there go all the weapons from trigger and they all disconnect harpia taking round one Harpia taken round one, and I actually forgot to change some stuff, so I'm going to do that right now. But how did you guys think that round went? That was rough. Very, very rough for number 15. Very, very rough for number 15. That was... Hmm. I'd, I'd be pressed to say if that could have gone worse. That is not the right logo. I don't know why the right one is smaller. We'll have to fix that later. But anyway. How'd you guys think that went? Funkin' Crispy says train wreck. Yeah. 
I'd go with that. That felt like a train wreck. That was rough. Phoenix commit fratricide. That was that was the beginning of the end. And then you had, well, you had Beaver get completely taken out of the fight. He just went on a merry voyage. I don't know, I don't know where he was going. He was on an adventure. And then he comes back. He's like, I'm gonna do something. And he does something by killing a teammate. And then Skinner decides, I've had enough. I can't deal with it. I'm out! He takes his own life. Hangs himself by the belt in his own room. Waves the white flag. And he takes himself out. And then there's two remaining. And it just becomes the gangbang train from Harpia. And they take it to number 15. I gotta, I gotta put up the score. Harpia is currently leading... Number 15, one to nothing after one round. How many of you guys in your uh, in your bets got that one right? I want to see it. How many of you guys got it right? Who bet on Harpia in that round? Why am I sitting up? Move that down. There we go. Generic Gambler says, I have faith in number 15 in the next round. Well, I do too. Hopefully they can take it to round three. Number 15, take us to round three. Please, DCS gods, let it happen. Hear my prayer. Let's see how it goes. I'm going to send you guys back to the supercut. I'm going to set up round two. Harpy is currently leading one to nothing against number 15 in this Gold League matchup. Will they be able to bring it back? We're going to find out. Oh, big Moltar. We don't want that. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in the sim. This is round two. And this is fast forwarding. And I don't want you to fast forward. Why are you fast forwarding? This is round two between Harpia and number 15 battle axes. Harpia is currently up one to nothing over number 15. Do we think number 15 is going to be able to bring it back? Chat, what are your predictions? You think they got it in them? You think it's going to happen? I don't know. I do not know.
Things are getting a little choppy here. It's like DCS doesn't like playing the second the second track. Maybe I need to take that into consideration from now on that I need to restart things after after the first one. Hmm. Robski, I don't either. You know, with the new 120s, I, I uh, some people like it, though. You know, Datalink, I think, on the flanker, though, is better than all of the other aircraft's Datalink. It does see through mountains. Meaning the AWACS can talk to you through mountains. Not that, you know, the radar and stuff sees through mountains. That's, that's not what I meant. I like the flanker too. I mean, I, I flew it for, for years. With fifty first, I mean, one SATAC, one SATAL with it. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. But I like the F sixteen more. Uh, sixteen. Mm-hmm. Mm mm-hmm. Turn up the volumes here a little bit. You guys can see my pretty face still, though. Somebody said, I think it was Gazra said. A good change for the stream would be to have a score, like a, a scoreboard overlay with the kills. So that's something I'm going to do. I've got a scoreboard that somebody made for me that i got to go back and and uh, pay for and get it moved over. And then I can I can do the, the kills. It's just i got to do buttons and stuff. So that's that's something I can do. Uh, that's coming. I got rid of the scoreboard because it was just being used for the score and it was just kind of taking up space. So we're going to put that back in. That is going to come back. Lead two shift for Harpy has taken off the F-16 and the C-27, leaving Maz in his F-14 and Brand in his Mirage still here. What could the teams have done there? Well, number 15 could maybe not have killed a teammate. That would have been effective at, you know, allowing them to be more effective in that round. Vertical Charlie could have not committed out in the open. Um, I think it was just kind of a, a combination of mistake after mistake after mistake. We're going to have to see if number 15 is able to learn from those mistakes and make the needed changes uh, and correct them. You guys think they'll be able to? I don't know. We'll find out. Dorito! Where's the Kit Kat? I hear it. There it is. Kurtaka notching is the meta? Well, yes, but the new 120s have made notching more difficult. Um, so energy, I think, now is the new meta. Just energy energy retention and energy management is the new, the new meta in DCS. The one thing about the Mirage, though, is its RCS is a little funky. It's, the Dorito can notch virtually anything. Oh, it's desync? Oh, okay. Should res you think they should restrict 120Bs to make notching a little less tense? Generic, what do you mean? Can you elaborate on that? Like, what do you mean by less tense? Triggering the teleporting bug. Pixie, are you talking about like the barrel rolls that people are doing? Yeah, they're... We put a rule in place. 
I've asked teams to relay to their squadrons that if you're caught doing that, you're going to lose the round. Because um, that barrel roll or whatever that people do, it, that's just stupid. That is really dumb. It causes lag and desync even in the in the tracks. So just don't do it. It's, it's dumb. Watching these guys ingress, separation between the two teams is still 130 miles, so they've got they've got a while to go. Yeah, they need to I thought they were gonna Irobsky, I thought they were gonna fix a lot of the notching stuff. And they didn't. So notching is still pretty easy. with everything. I thought they were going to fix a lot of that, but they, they didn't. Steve099 says, would a 8700K and 32 gigs of RAM with a 10, 1080 push 1440? Yeah, it should. You should be fine. Are you overclocking that 8700? You'll get a bit more out of it. But DCS is uh, not very optimized. I mean, it's a single-threaded, dual-threaded application. You got everything on one and then audio on the other. So, yeah, that'd be a great build. Quad, what is the score? Harpia is currently up one to nothing over number 15 going into round two. Changing some camera angles. Well, generic, that's kind of the point about notch and C's is really tense. I mean, the, the I want the reason I wanted the C to be a part of this was because I wanted people to pay more for mistakes, right? I wanted people to not be able to make mistakes and then just not have to pay for it. They can just make a mistake and just fly away or notch it pretty easily against the B. The C at least ups that ante a little bit. It makes it a little more diff difficult um to, to uh, overcome your mistakes. So, at least that's how I look at it in this particular instance. Teams still have a decent way to make it before the incursions start going down. Bob and Trigger are leading the way for Harpia, and Skinner and Vertical Charlie are leading the way for number 15. Uh, number 15 looks like they're going towards feet wet. Interesting. Interesting decision. They're now just south of Sukumi. This is that's who we're riding with right now. We got Cougar and Skinner. So it's actually a three ship up there, and Beaver in the 14 is trailing behind as a singleton. War crimes, what's the match score? Harpia is up one to nothing right now. Yeah, Robski's got a point. The 120B for 77 is pretty, pretty even right now with the new changes. I mean, not right now in this, but with the new changes, it is. It definitely is. But, you know, I didn't... I don't want to look at this just trying to keep one aircraft relevant, the C-27, um, by going to that weapon restriction. You know, it's I, I view it as what's best for everything, and that's why I made the... Decision to allow the teams to decide. The teams get to decide. Uh, no clone. How does the F-15 do? It does really well. It's not flown as much because I think the meta is moving towards full fi. Um, but the F the 15 is still a very effective BVR fighter. Very, very effective. Oh, Drona, I'm not saying the R-77 is good. It's definitely still not great, especially because it's a smoked missile. But it, it turns better than a 120, like Robski said. But it bleeds energy, and it's easier to see, which is a People underestimate how detrimental it is to be able to see a missile when it's launched. Smoked missiles have a huge um, thing to overcome because they're so easy to see. 
I mean, it's like a beacon with a spotlight. Hey! Hey, I'm over here! Hey! Hey! Bro! See, it's really hard to sneak up on somebody because even if they you sneak up on them, they still get that opportunity to, you know, maybe get seen. So, it is what it is, um, but we'll have to see how things change. I know they made the changes to the ER. We'll have to see how those changes impact Satal, if at all, um, but we'll, we'll just have to see. Teams are now separated by 30 miles, so Beaver's waiting a little bit longer to unleash that AIM-54, and so is Maz and the Harpia AIM-54. We're now under 30 miles now. Trigger and Bob leading the way in the F-16 and J-11, or Su-27, excuse me, for Harpia. And then Cougar and Skinner leading the way in a J-11 and F-18 for number 15. Let's change the music up the ante here a little bit. Robski's got another good point that, you know, you can't say that the F-15 is worse just because it doesn't have good SA. You got to make your own SA. Look outside the cockpit, brother. It's, you can see a lot of stuff. Smoked missiles, see crap all over the place. AIM-54s, ah, 50 miles away, can see that stuff. You know, it's, you gotta look out. You demark two eyeball. I think people, as Robski said, have an over-reliance on, uh, on data link. And so they think that any aircraft that doesn't have data link just sucks. When it does not, it is very good. The AOA that an F-15 can pull is still ridiculous. And the energy that it can impart on a missile and the extra fuel that it has over an F-16 um, make it a really good adversary or very tough adversary. Uh, and it's instant lock radar. Um, it's ability to see exactly how far away somebody is with the RWR. It's, it's still a very, very effective aircraft. But no missiles. Oh, there's an AIM-7. AIM-7?! What? What? Aim 7. Well, okay, so clouds aren't actually... Uh, they're client-dependent. They're not synced over the server, which is why we don't use clouds in Satal. It's just clear weather because clouds are not synced. At all. Leighton, I'm gonna hope to so too. I'm giving Beaver the credit of the of the doubt that maybe it was the it was the wrong missile. Marco, maybe, maybe people have a tendency to not just fly with what's the best. I mean, look how many J11s and stuff are flown in in Su-27s are flown in Satel, and we we all know it's not the best, but it's still flown pretty heavily. I don't know what's going to happen with the Typhoon. We'll have to see when it comes out five years from now. Uh, I saw something. Now we got Maz and Brand ingressing against Vertical Charlie in his J-11. There goes an AIM-54. Can we see it from Vertical Charlie's point of view? Yes. Yes. We can. And Vertical Charlie recognizes that, says, I'm out of here, bro. And he is ditching it. Vertical notching going straight down. You can see the missile trying to track him. We can see it ingressing on him. Still riding with Vertical Charlie. There's the missile. Should be just over five miles out. Not sure why he's air braking. But that missile does not look like it's tracking him anymore. Nope. That's going to go straight in the ground. Boop. And it goes... Boop, and the ground catches it with open arms. And that is not a factor. So decent shot from Maz, but Vertical Charlie recognizes it early and gets out of there. No, it's not. Bloop. It's boop. Come on. Gamer, get it right. Nah, 
gambler. It's not the gra it's not the grass. It was Ninja Squirrel that jumped out and grabbed that missile and pulled it into the into the ground. You guys can't see shit in this this camera angle I was just giving you. There we go. So teams are separated right now by 32 miles. Much more defensive this round. Much more defensive this round. Cougar's now ingressing. We saw Vertical Charlie do it last time. Now it's Cougar going to get Bob in the Harpia F-16. Cougar's still got a full load of weapons. Don't see Bob's label yet. Trigger's following him in the Su-27. Bob in the F-16 still has three bags on. Cougar didn't launch anything. I'm going to assume he was launching some, locking somebody with STT, trying just to get him to turn around. And he does just that, but no missiles are off. Bob still has six 120s. No missiles launched in that incursion. I'd like to see Trigger to keep pressing instead of turning around with Bob. Bob then recognized nobody shot at me and then turn around, and they could get a little mini grinder going on right here. Because just coming in and turn around, just waste some fuel. Make Try and make something out of that situation. Try and at least get somebody to shoot. But now they're running back to Harpia's Maz and Bran, the Mirage and the Kit Kat 14. And then you got Skinner and Beaver ingressing, led by Vertical Charlie in the J-11. Maz is still pretty high. He's climbing up now through 28,000 feet. Looks like he's trying to impart as much energy as he can onto an imminent Phoenix launch. Here's Maz right here. Probably going to be launching on Vertical Charlie. Vertical Charlie is sitting at 20,000 feet. You're going to see something coming soon. Generic Gambler says he's going to fly... The C-101 in the next eight cell year. All the power to you, brother. Good luck. The C-101, though, guys, I got to say, that thing is constantly updated. That thing's changelog in every update is like a book. Those guys do an amazing job with all the bug fixes and stuff that go on in that C-101. So massive kudos to them. Awesome job. Looks like Vertical Charlie has turned around. Maz and his F-14 for Harpy is now at 35,000 feet, now descending. I'm betting there's going to be an AIM-54 launch here soon. As he's building his speed back up. There's Gate. Skinner is now the hot contact for number 15. There's the AIM-54 being launched from Maz. There it goes. Looks like that one's going to be on Skinner. Skinner immediately turns around. I guess he recognizes, I got a telephone pole coming. And he turns around. But that thing may pick up, make it pick up Vertical Charlie. Maz is not even going to support that missile. Interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. So here's the AIM-54. Is it tracking anybody? It is tracking somebody. Who's it on? Can't tell who it's on yet. And it got line of sighted. Tree! And flies straight into it. So they were able to get away from that pretty effectively. AIM-54 seem like they're getting easier and easier to notch. Which I think is correct. It's an old, old seeker head. Still four pilots remaining. For both sides. Oh no, Bob! Bob, no! Bob has DC'd! Skinner in the first round. Now Bob in the second one. Oh no! Bob is gone. Internet claims its next victim. And Bob is now deceased. Three pilots remaining for Harpia. And four still for number 15. That is bad news for Bob and the Harpia squadron. No bueno. Vertical Charlie now leading the charge for number 15.
Do we anticipate that he's going to be able to get a kill during this pass? He's still got a full weapon load. He's not even going to bother pressing. Not in gate, though. He's conserving that fuel. Oh, he is in gate. Never mind. Still full weapon loadout. So went, went into gate, threw that turn, came out of gate. Now he's at full mill. Now you got Cougar and Beaver ingressing against Trigger in the Harpy SU-27. Is he going to be able to make anything happen? So here's Trigger sitting at 22,000 feet. Still full weapon loadout. There goes an ER. Who is that on? Can we tell who that's on? I think that's going to be on Cougar. Cougar is now defending. So I think that's on Cougar. That missile's still being supported. Beaver now puts an AIM-54 out. Let's grab that bad boy. So here's the AIM-54 going on to Beaver. And that is going to be going... Or sorry, it's from Beaver. I think it's at Trigger. And she's going to have some juice. She is going to have plenty of juice by the time she reaches her target. So, missile on the right, Trigger on the left. But Trigger ends up line of sighting that, I think. I think. Is he going to see him? Oh, no. It's still tracking. Oh, no. Oh, no. Telephone pole. Hello. And Trigger gets taken down. He just lose. I'm going to assume he lost the RWR warning and comes out. And the, the AIM-54 is like, I'll see you, bro. And just pulverizes him. That is, that is unfortunate. That is a bit unfortunate. Not sure what happened there, but we are now down to a 4v2. That was a good shot. Close range shot from Beaver, so I got to give him credit for that. But man, oh man, was that unlucky. Just didn't main, it lost lock and then just, I guess it guessed where he was going to be or maybe it, that could have been INS though. You know, it went to where he thought he was going to be based on his direction when he lost the lock. Um, so that could have been that. Now we got Brand. If we jump back to the to the map so you guys can see what's going on. Skinner has put a 120 out on Brand's Mirage. He is now defending. That 120B is not going to be any type of factor. And they are coming out. And AIM-54 was launched from Maz onto God knows what. I don't even know that that had a track. Not sure where that's going. Still had lock on trigger. Oh, yeah. Good point, Drona. Yes. So that missile was supported the whole way. So that wasn't Heepler. That missile was just supported. Okay, makes total sense. Everybody, we all jump to conclusions saying, Ah, oh, magic on us! Oh, and that was missile was supported by the F-14. So if it's up above everything, it, it's going to be able to see everything. You know, that's well done, Drona. Well done. Well done. Massive, massive credit to you. Now we've got an incursion coming between Cougar and the Mirage of Bran. And here comes... A 530 launch from close range. That thing gets line, line of sight of that one into the ground. But Brand is sticking with it. And now we've got Vertical Charlie coming in. And Vertical Charlie sees him. So let's move to his point of view. Vertical Charlie is coming in on Brand. Brand launches something. 530 on to Vertical Charlie. Vertical Charlie's in trouble. And Vertical Charlie loses his wings. So I thought Brand was going to be able to save Cougar, which he does. But then Cougar dies, or Br Vertical Charlie dies. And now Brand is in a merge, and he is very slow coming in against Cougar. Does Cougar see him? No. Cougar flies directly over him. I got to see the map to make sure we're not missing anything. We are not. So Cougar, they do not see each other, and Maz is just out here. I don't know what Maz is doing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Friendly 120 coming in on Cougar. Luckily, he's able to line side that. Skinner, you are on the wrong guy. You are on the wrong man, my man. The wrong guy. Let's go back to Bran and see if he's able to find anybody. Oh, wrong button. And now he has merged with Skinner. 
and Cougar is off. Brand is in a really good position, making magic things happen with that Mirage. Launches a magic off the rail. That finds a tree. Tree! And then launches a second one, and that's going to eat Skinner for lunch. So Brand gets two quick kills. We're down down to a 2v2. Number 15, Cougar and Beaver remaining against Brand and Maz for Harpia. Brand has no missiles left. No missiles left. Cougar looks like he's going to be the next guy to make something happen. He's got plenty of weapons left. There goes an ET onto Maz's F-14. And that looks like she is going to hit. Is she? Flared at the last moment. But Cougar is in a very, very good position here. There goes an ER or a 77. And that is going to be it for Maz. That is going to be all she wrote. Bam! And he gets face smiled. He gets taken down. So let's jump back and see what's going on with Brand in the Mirage. Brand is now behind Beaver. And he is in a 2v1 situation with no missiles. No missiles left. Beaver and Cougar are still remaining for number 15. But Brand has nothing left. This is not good. Not good. You do not want to be in this position. Looks like they see where he's at. Yep, somebody's up there marking. So they got a decent amount of altitude here. Let's turn up the missile, the music, get some suspense going. Oh, Brand did a phenomenal job, Raven. Brand's done a phenomenal job. I'm just saying, without any missiles, without any boomsticks, it is going to be very difficult to be able to make something happen. You need boomsticks. I mean, you got an M61. But boomsticks are the way to make the magic happen. And if you don't have them, it's a tough uphill, uphill battle. Riding along with Brand right now. Let's actually take a look at... Uh, let's actually flip over and see what Cougar sees. Cougar, I'd like to see Cougar higher. Cougar needs to be higher. He's allowing Brand to line aside him right now. If he would get higher, maybe he's trying to conserve altitude or conserve energy. I can't talk conserve fuel. Um, maybe that's what he's trying to do, but I'd like to see him higher. Because Brand is going to be low, flying over the tops of the mountains, and he's just going to be in and out for Cougar. Brand looks like he's trying to get the recommit in. So let's flip back to his perspective. So here's Brand. There's Cougar. Getting closer. Getting closer. Cougar lost line of sight there. Comes back out. Cougar's got line of sight again. Cougar's within eight miles now. Still closing. Brand still has a decent amount of energy at 550 knots, but he's got to disappear. He's got to disappear. What's in front of him? He's got to find a way to vanish. Cougar is continuing to close the distance. Seven miles now. Sorry, four miles. That's the F-14 at seven miles. Cougar's at four miles. Missile release, aim 54 from Beaver. We can see it coming in. Three miles, still tracking. Two miles. Is it gonna get him? One mile. I think it's gonna run on energy. Oh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close, it's right there. It is right there. <laughs> Barely ran out of energy by the time it was able to reach out and touch Brand. I don't think that was lag. That was just 
running out of energy there. Brand is now over Mach 1, but aim 9 now. Don't think that one's going to be able to reach out and touch him. That gets line of sighted. Brand is doing a phenomenal job of staying in this fight. Now merge with the F-14, but unfortunately he's in a 2v1 situation with no missiles remaining. But he disappears! Neither of these guys see him. Now Cougar's coming back in on his six. And Cougar has a lot of weapons left. There goes an R-73, and Brand gets taken down. Well done by Brand to stay alive there. Well done. But in the end, if you don't have any boomsticks, you're gonna have a hard time. Well done, though. Well, well done. Much better flown by number 15. Much better executed by my man Beaver, who we got here. Beaver, in the first round, for anybody that didn't see the first round, was off on his own, went out, brought a picnic basket, tried to find a tree to, you know, jump under, have himself a picnic. Was 30 miles away from the fight, but redeemed himself. Totally redeemed himself here in round two, getting that first kill after the disconnect. The unfortunate disconnect of Bob. R.A.P. Bob. Disconnected. Beaver. 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 That's the ground, Beaver! Oh, he's out of fuel. Oh, no. Are they going to be able to make it back? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. The suspense is building. Mm. Are they going to be able to make it back? Is it going to be a tie? Mm. Don't know. But while he's RTBing, let's bring up the TAC view. Attack view for round... Oh, he disconnected, so I guess they weren't going to make him RTV. Why did you not have him RTV? Oh, man, maybe he had enough fuel, but that seemed like a perfect recipe to have him run out of fuel. Man. Sportsmanship, maybe? I don't I don't know. Hmm. Let's take a look at the attack view here and see what actually went down. Oh. Number 15 was winning option with 0% of the bets. What? That doesn't seem right. Streamlabs bot, you're drunk. Let's see what happened here. So Bob, I think, disconnected before anybody. Yeah, there goes Bob. Just see you later, Bob. Bye, Bob. He gone. So he gets taken out. Bob Magic Internets. And here comes the AIM-54. Let's grab that and see what she sees. So here's the AIM-54, rocking and rolling, coming in on trigger. No, stupid song. Coming in, coming in. And this is where we're all crying, Magic INS, Heepler, what are you done? And it was actually because Drona and the, uh, the Rio seat of Beaver's uh, F-14 was doing his job in supporting that missile. Yep. Who would have thought DCS guys jumping to conclusions? No way. No way. Never happens. Ever. Ever. But great job by these guys supporting that missile into its intended target. Well done. If that's in case, what happened? Side eye. So now we're down to a four... No. Who died? Now we're down to a 4v2. And Brand here, unfortunately, this is rough. I, I'm going to assume that Vertical Charlie just didn't see Brand in this scenario. He has to. Yeah, he sees him. Why didn't you launch? Go pew pew. Launch something at him. What happened there, Vertical Charlie? What was, what was that about? You didn't launch. 
You looked like you had him. I mean, it was he was in your field of view. What happened there? Brand gets two quick kills, takes down Vertical Charlie, and then uh, actually, yeah, and then he takes down. I think there's a five thirty or magic right here. There goes the five thirty. That was unfortunate. That neither of these magics, magics hit. That was rough. I don't know why this one didn't track, but that was that was unfortunate because if that would have tracked, that could have totally changed the outcome of how this ended up happening or how the round ended up playing out here at the end. Um, because if he, he would have had one missile left, but would have been able to take one of these guys down and maybe get into a guns only merge with the Tomcat or the the J11. The Mirage and a merge is nothing to to sneeze at. So he ends up just taking these guys on a on a sightseeing tour. No idea what their fuel states were, but takes them on a sightseeing tour. Um, but he just gets slowly caught up. The AIM-54 was, it didn't kill him, but it forced him to, to, vent, to defend and allowed Beaver and Cougar to really close the distance. And by the time, um, you know, Beaver's able to recommit, or Brand's able to recommit, there's nothing he can do in a 2v1 scenario like this. And he gets taken out. You just get sandwiched, and he gets taken out. So that's it for round two. But that means we're going to round three. Round three, baby. So super cut. And then round three action, number 15, taken on Harpia. Winner takes all. See you guys back in just a minute. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to take another moment to say that this stream is brought to you by Black Hog. We're going to start doing this because I feel like the sponsors are, aren't getting enough attention. But anyway, this stream is brought to you by Black Hog. And I want to show you guys, some of you guys that were here at the very beginning, um, I want to show you this teaser that they have. I don't think I have permission to show this, but it looks so good. I wanted to show you guys anyway. Um, I'm excited about this. button box baby a button box another button box i am ready i am so ready dc not dcs but just simming in general doesn't have enough button boxes they, we need more options and blood button box black hog is supposedly getting ready to release a whole new line so that's the teaser trailer i got 
I don't know that I have permission to show you guys that, but I did anyway, because I'm excited about it. I'm excited about that one. So kudos to Black Hog. I'm still waiting on my Black Hog box to get here. Uh, the one that's out right now. Um, it, it got lost in the Atlantic Ocean. But I don't know. I don't know where it is. They said they were going to send me another one. If the other one shows up, we'll do a giveaway. Because no point in me keeping two. We'll do we'll do a giveaway if the other one decides to show up later. But let's jump into the sim. See how these guys are going to get on. Round three, Harpia, number 15, coming at you. How is this going to go? How do you guys think it's going to go one-to-one -one in this matchup so far? Suspense, music, engage. I don't know who's going to come out on top. Number fifth. I got to give the... I'm leaning towards number 15 because I think winning the previous round is a pretty big advantage. It's a morale boost. It's just... You got that adrenaline high. You just you got stuff going for you, right? You got got things moving in your direction. And I think it's hard for other teams to overcome that. Shout out to Not Clone for dropping the Prime sub. If anybody doesn't know, uh, you can use if you got Prime from Amazon, you can link it to Twitch and you get a free sub every month. Not Clone took advantage of that and threw me his sub. Much appreciated. Everything goes right back into making the stream better. Uh, next on the list is a thirty ninety, so we can get more cameras. Um, we're we're pushing the envelope for system performance. We're pushing it. Right? So, GPU is next. Prime sub is not available in India. Dude, just go yell at your government. Tell them why not. Moltar needs Prime sub. Just start throwing things at them. Yeah, 3090 card. That's, that's on the to-do list. Hopefully. And probably a new power supply because with how my PC is set up right now, I don't think... Uh, a 1,000 watt is going to be able to cut it. I never thought I would say that. Hellwalker, I'm just giving you crap, man. It, it most definitely is Amazon. I'm, I'm getting... Amazon's kind of getting annoying. Sometimes. Well, I can't... Amazon does pretty well. I mean, for, for everything that they do, for how many people order from them, um, they do pretty well. Amazon, why you no allow Prime in India? Come on. We got enough people. You guys can make a killing. Just waiting for these guys to take off or to depart. Here with number 15 at Maycop. Again, this is Maycop taking on Sanaki. We are tied one apiece between Harpia and number 15. Number 15 is being represented by Skinner, Cougar, Vertical, Charlie, and Beaver. And then if we take a look at the other airfield, which is going to be Sanaki. We haven't been down there yet today because I'd like to stay at one airfield. If we take a look at what's going on down here at Sinaki. Uh-oh. There we go. If we take a look at what's going on down, down here at Sinaki, uh, it is going to be Bob, Trigger, Brand, and Maz all hanging out. And actually, I need to pause this because the other camera needs to catch up. It is too slow. We are behind. few seconds ahead on the right camera. Got to link them up. There we go. So we are rolling. We are rolling, baby. Off and going. How are we going to go here? Yeah, the the twelve pin is that what you guys are talking about? No, the twelve pin's happening. It, it's a thing, but that's not why I need a new power supply. I need a new power supply because I'm pretty sure at full load, like when my CPU and my GPU are under full load, I'm gonna be pulling over over a thousand watts of power. Because the thirty ninety is supposed to be like redonkulous, redonkulous, four hundred watt TDP or something. My uh, 10900K is something at like overclocked. It's pulling like 300, over 300 watts. So I got like all my hard drives combined. I think I have 12. Then I got a 1060 daughter card for more GPUs. So I, I think I need over a thousand watts. But anyway, let's watch these guys depart. Turn up the volume and get ready 
round three, Harpia, number 15. Here we go.
All right, let's get back into this. Do I use track IR for the broadcast? No, because it's mounted on my other monitors. It would uh, it would screw up quite a bit. It'd be all over the place, so I just turn it off. No track IR. Separation between the two teams is down to 62 miles. Vertical Charlie and Cougar leading the way for number 15 and no, Vertical Charlie yeah, and Cougar and then Trigger and Bob leading the way for Harpia. Who is going to take this one? Dagwood dropped another 100 bits. Thank you very much, brother. Goes into the war chest, making the stream better. Now down to under 60 miles, 50 miles now. We're well within AM54 range, but the Tomcats are in the trail. They are behind. They are significantly behind. So Tomcats are 60 miles away from the fray and 75 miles away from the fray. So they got a little bit. First missile should be coming off the rails here soon, though. My anticipatory feeling is that Cougar, I'm calling it, is going to have a match. We saw him in round one do some damage, but I think he is going to, he is the conductor on the bang train, and he is leaving the station here in round three. That is my prediction. Are we going to see it? Or is the train going to derail? I don't know. But once the bang train starts, it don't stop. So Cougar is sitting right here. We're going to grab him. Is he going to be able to do anything in this first pass? It's tr sounds like he's trying to conserve some fuel. 95% engine RPM, 30,000 feet. Su-27, sorry, J-11. 350 knots indica indicated. What is going to happen? Looks like he's rocking one ER, four, three 73s, and two ETs. He is my conductor, my man to watch for the match. This is my guess. You guys with me or without me? AIM 120 comes off from Bob. Bob puts it out there. At least I think it was Bob. Cougar's now descending. Aim 54 release from Maz down to the south. I'm going to guess that's on the lead two ships. 27 miles. Is that going to be able to cause anything to happen? There it is. 2,700 knots. Is she even tracking? Yes. Who is she on? We cannot tell. Maybe on Skinner, actually. Looks like it's on Skinner. So if we go to split view. Skinner. Nine miles. Skinner's at 23,000 feet. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, don't bleed all your energy, missile. Two miles. No! No! Aim 54, what have you done? Was not supported. The vertical notch gets the best of it. Or it just went tree. Boom. It found its tree. It found its home. And Skinner does a good job of vertical notching that missile. Was unsupported by Maz. For anybody just joining us, this is round three. We are tied at one apiece between Harpia and and number 15, Battle Axes. Winner takes all. This is best of three. Who's going to be able to come out on top here? Bob and Trigger are leading the way to the north for Harpia. Skinner and Vertical Charlie have recommitted here to the south. 
or sorry, for number 15. Skinner looks like he's turning away. No, he's recommitting. So Skinner's head on with Bob. Bob. Still got a center line on. Skinner, you don't need your center line. That's a lot of drag. Get rid of it. Separation between these two chips is two chips. Two ships is 12 miles. They're not in too bad of a position. Skinner is now breaking off. No missiles launched yet. Vertical, of course, as soon as I say that, vertical Charlie puts a missile out. It's an ER. On to Harpy's Bob. Bob responds with a 120 of his own. And is that ER going to be supported all the way in? I don't think so. Bob's going to be able to get away from that one just fine. And nothing, nothing, nada is a factor in that incursion. Still four pilots remaining for both sides here. What's gonna what's it gonna take to to change this up? Who's gonna break the stalemates? Both teams still very defensive. Cougar and Skinner now ingressing for number 15 against Brand and Maz. Aim 54 being launched by Maz from the trail, the trailing element for Harpia. And that, can't tell who that's on yet. Who's that going to be on? Looks like it's on Beaver. So here's the Aim 54. It's not supported, which is rather unfortunate. Got to support those missiles, guys. Got to support those missiles. Beaver looks like he's decently high, but he's already cold, recognizes, hey, that's that's not a plane's contrail. That's a telephone pole. I got to get my butt out of here. And he turns around, and that missile's not going to do anything. It's already down to 1,300 knots. He, she is dead. Well done by Beaver on defending that incoming threat. Trigger for Harpia now coming in. Creating an incursion on the northern three ship of number 15's Cougar, Skinner, and Vertical Charlie. And then he gets cold feet and turns away. Very defensive posturing coming from both teams in this round three. Now it's Harpy's Brand and Maz bringing the heat against number 15. And Vertical Charlie is responding accordingly against them. He's at 22,000 feet. He's only launched an ET seemingly so far. Did I didn't see it. But is either of these guys going to be able to make anything happen? So we can see Vertical Charlie. Oops, sorry. Who we're riding along with is right here. Coming in against the two ship from Harpy of Maz and Brand. Further south, separation between these elements is 20 miles. Sorry, 15 miles. Aim 54 release from Maz. We can see it out there. Right, uh, right over the top of Vertical Charlie's aircraft. Is it going to track him? There it goes. Doesn't look like it's tracking him. It's above him. Still not descending. Maybe on Cougar. Flying directly over Vertical Charlie right now. Think that missile is going to be on Cougar. So let's grab Cougar's point of view. Cougar is now defensive. Where is that missile? I don't see it. 
and it flew harmlessly by. So if we go to split screen, you guys can see the missile actually didn't track anybody, flew harmlessly by. I'm gonna guess now that we where we see it's at, it was actually intended for Vertical Charlie, but it ended up getting defeated and just didn't track him, whether the defeat was intentional or not. Yep, sorry guys. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. But still very defensive posturing coming from both teams. I'm worried about the AIM-54. AIM-54 is remaining for the Tomcats coming in here late game. Beaver puts an AIM-7 out from, what is that? 25 miles. Maybe he's just trying to get people to think it's, a, it's an AIM-54, but what's the point? You're just going to turn around. It's totally unsupported. They're just going to turn around. At least try and utilize that to make people do something, right? I mean, what does he have left? He still has all of his Phoenix, so not sure what the point of that AIM-54 was unless he was just trying to dump it to reduce some weight. He's launched both of them so far. Not entirely sure what the point was there. But still four pilots remaining for both sides. Beaver is just off on his own. I mean, he's 15 miles away from his nearest teammate. Harpy is very condensed. Is the condensed posturing going to be a benefit to them, or is the spread out nature of what number 15 is bringing going to work out for them instead? Beaver is now recommitting down here to the southwest, or southeast, excuse me. You can see him recommitting at 30,000 feet, 350 knots indicated. But then we have this three ship for number 15 pressing vertical Charlie Cougar and Skinner against a singleton from Harpia. This could be bad news. Trigger is all by himself right here. What's going to happen there? That, I don't know. I mean, distance between these guys, 12 miles. Trigger is... Sorry, wrong button. Trigger is decided against it, and now it's Bob coming in here. Bob and his F-16 is pressing against the three-ship Skinner. And Cougar are the only ones remaining hot. And Bob is coming in at 25,000 feet. Very fast, 450 knots. Two, sorry, four AMRAMs remaining. He's tunnel visioned onto Skinner. Cougar is now on him, onto Bob. So Cougar is going to be on Bob's left. Down there somewhere. And Trigger may be turning into him. Indeed he is. And Cougar is at 20,000 feet. Let's go to split screen so we don't miss anything. So there's Cougar. Cougar's breaking away. Bob is continuing to press. Doesn't see anything coming. I think he's recognized that no actives were launched. If they were, he would have seen him because the R-77 is a smoked missile. Aim 54 coming from the left from Beaver. Up there, there's the smoke trails. So Aim 54 coming in onto Brand. It's not on Bob. Bob puts a 120. It's pretty dangerous 120. On to Cougar. Is Cougar going to be able to get away from that one? One and a half miles back there. I don't think that's going to be a problem. One mile now. Yeah, those, those aren't going to be a factor. And there's Vertical Charlie. Yeah, not an issue. Not an issue at all. And the M54 at the same time was also defeated. So still four pilots remaining per side. And Beaver is just off doing something. Not entirely sure what he's doing, but missiles now being exchanged between Skinner and Maz. Aim 54 launch from Maz, 120 launch from Skinner. And Cougar looks like he's going to be in a pretty good position ingressing in on Harpy. He's low. The question's going to be is does anybody see him? Is going to be able to anybody going to be able to see his position? Looks like Bob does. Bob's going to be back there, eight miles back. And Vertical Charlie is now covering Cougar's ingress. So let's go to split screen so you guys can see what's going on. Vertical Charlie is now coming in against Bob. Bob has multiple missiles coming in on him. Aim 54 and a 120. Both targeting him. He's descending rapidly. I don't know that he's going to be able to get away from that. He's got the same 54 
Aim 54 coming in. Where is it? And he gets line of sighted. Hit that big hill off to his left. And he is able to effectively get away from that one. But now Cougar is coming in against Trigger. Let's go to split screen. Both of these guys' perspective. Trigger on the left, Cougar on the right. I don't see either of them yet. Is Cougar breaking away? I think he's decently close. Yeah, they're really close to one another. Right in front of one another now, two miles away. There's a missile from Trigger. Cougar responds with an R-77. Both of those 73s get flared, and Trigger gets taken down. Masterful display of evasion coming from Cougar. And Trigger just launched IR missiles. If that was a 77, unfortunately, since it's a Su-27, he can't. It's not a J-11, but well done by Cougar. Dang. Well, well done. Well, well done indeed. And now we've got Vertical Charlie ingressing. 120 launch from Skinner. I think that's actually on Cougar. That is not good. 120 now coming in on Vertical Charlie. Vertical Charlie's in a bit of a pickle. Is he going to be able to get away from that? The flares are not going to help you against an incoming 120 threat. And he gets hit, but no damage. Interesting. Interesting. And now Cougar, we're going to pause this because I just saw a missile launch from Cougar and I don't want you guys to miss it. So now Cougar puts an ER onto Bob and we're going to try and get it so you guys can see what's going on. There's the ER coming from Cougar onto Bob. Let's hit play and see what happens here. Bob is a dead Bob. He gets taken. No, he get, no, he got hit. He got taken down. So Cougar, the man is on a rampage. Twofer for the Cougar. And Vertical Charlie just shrugs off that 120. Strange, but great play by Cougar. Well, well done. And Bob is taken out of the match. Make sure I don't miss. I think we missed uh, Maz getting taken down. And now it is just Brand. Brand is all by himself. The Hero Mirage. All by his lonesome. It is actually a 4v1. What is going to happen? Because Brand is all alone. All alone. Let's see if we can see what's going on here. Split screen action. So Brand just flew under two guys. They didn't notice where he was. If we look above Brand. Doo -doo. There's the two guys. There's one of them. There's another one in front of him. Brand is now recommitting. Aim 120 coming in on Brand from his trail. That got line of sighted. So Skinner is all over Brand 6. Somewhere. Skinner is at... What's his altitude? He's low. The Skinner is at like 9,000 feet. I don't see him. There's Skinner. And now Beaver's coming in on the head of Brand. So flip around. There's Beaver. Five miles in front. Brand's just in trouble. Flies through a mountain. You know, that's what Mirages do. Aim 54 now chucked out there. That's not tracking. That actually could be on Vertical Charlie. That could be a problem. But Brand still does not see anybody. So he's making, he's prolonging this. And that Aim 54 actually looks like it's on Vertical Charlie. Got line of sighted though. But Brand doing a really good job of prolonging this fight. Now recommitting. Uh, not the best place to recommit because as soon as he comes out of this hill, he's going to have a decent distance before he can get to anywhere to line aside anything. There goes a Matra. And that is coming in on to Cougar. Cougar's in trouble. Is he going to be able to get away from that? He vertical notches it or it's unsupported by Brand. Well done. I think it was just unsupported by Brand. And now Brand 
I think Brand is going to feel the pain train here in just a few moments. So he's got Beaver in front of him, and he's got all kinds of people behind him. Split screen so you guys can see what's going on. Brand's got an AIM-9 coming behind him. There's two. AIM-9, another missile, 73. We're just going to shoot all the things to make sure that Mirage is dead. But Cougar, Moltar calls it right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right here. Got it right. And Cougar, the man of the match. Cougar brings the bang train, the pain train, for number 15 against Harpia. And Harpia just gets railroaded. Number 15 still with four pilots remaining. Dang. Dang. What even happened? Dang. I don't think they make a RTB here. But guys, that is it. Number 15 takes it two to one in this best of three, going the distance to three rounds. Number 15 makes it, takes it two in a row. Harpia takes round one. Number 15 comes back, says, we had enough. You took us, killed us in round one, and they bring it back. Cougar, the man of the match, in my opinion, just runs it, railroads the opposition with, I think, three kills there in the crucial round three. Well, well done by him. Well, well done. But I don't, I don't think that's that's really any... Uh, no worth going through the tack view on that one. So that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, these guys don't land in this round. So we're going to shut down the stream here. But well done by number 15 to be able to come back and be able to take it in three. Whew, going the distance. Our next match is going to be Thursday. Task Force tried it, take it on Joint Task Force France. And then we are not going to be here on Saturday. So I have some stuff I need to take care of for the house we're building. No say tell on Saturday. So Thursday is going to be the last match of the week. Again, it is going to be Task Force tried it, take it on Joint Task Force France. And then we'll be back the following Tuesday with ECV 56 Condor against Dragon Squadron. So, guys, that's all I got. Well flown by number 15 and Harpia. Congratulations to number 15 for taking that one in three rounds. Um, that was a great, really exciting matchup, but that's all I got. Skittles, yeah, you, you join us at the very end. All my, my beard's gone. I mean, I got a five o'clock shadow because that's how I like to roll. No, I just got tired of having a Brillo pad on my face. I can only take it for so long. So that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. See you guys on Thursday. Again, it is going to be Task Force trying to take it on Joint Task Force France. If you guys haven't liked and subscribed to us on YouTube and Twitter, make sure you do that. Follow us on both because we release super cuts all of the replays get released there if you guys miss a live stream um twitter is the best place for making sure you guys don't miss us going live for any giveaways or anything we're doing any of the action coming coming really at all um and we'll be announcing fight for honor here coming soon we're just finalizing some stuff i know i keep saying that but we're just finalizing some stuff to get the announcement ready to go so 1v1 bfm action coming at the end of september get ready that will be coming back so like I said earlier, that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, Thursday, have a good one. Fly safe in those virtual skies, and I will see you guys later.